Right guys, welcome back to the channel, one piece at too many. Now, in the last video, I showed you the unboxing of the new mini little Komodo made by Landman, and I promised you we'd be doing a T-bone steak for its first cook, and that's exactly what we're doing. So, in front of me, we have an absolutely beasty T-bone steak, 12 ounce, and you'll see, you'll think, well, what's that? That's a temperature probe going into it. Okay, so before I get cracking, let me run you through the ingredients and equipment that we're using in today's video. So we have 12 ounce T-bone steak. See the nice T on the bone. Cajun seasoning, pepper, sea salt, and then equipment we have temperature probe half a teaspoon seasoning sort of measurer and um, we've got my, my new, one of my new chopping boards a pair of tongs and a knife and then obviously the new little Kamado mini Kamado made by Landman so we've got this up to temperature as you can see it's just settled at just under 250. I have closed the vents off just while we're doing this just to settle it down so it doesn't creep up too much. So let's get cooking now. First thing we're going to do now is we are going to liberally coat the steak. So the steak has been set out as well for half an hour to 45 minutes just to bring it up to room temperature and um, what I'm using here is some Cajun seasoning from Spice Mountain and liberal coating so this is actually one teaspoon measure not half okay and I'm just gonna rub that in so this meat as well it's really good quality from mainstream butchers catering supplies and then turn it over and we'll do exactly the same So and now we're going to put it on the grill. Okay, so we're going to carefully just open the grill. You'll see I've got a temperature probe at the grill level where the steak's going to be, and it's currently reading 210. So I've got two probes in use at the minute. So 200, or 200 now we've opened it, and the steak's reading at 18 degrees in the, right in the core. So this probe goes all the way in to sort of the thickest part. And then what we're going to do, I'm gonna pull that in, like so. I'm gonna just close the lid. That coming out there, the wire for the probe won't make any difference. And that's gonna take around 10 minutes. And what we're gonna aim for is to get that steak core temperature between 40 and 45 degrees. We're then gonna bring it off, cover it in tin foil, let it rest. And while we crank the Kamado up, get it really hot. And then we're gonna sear it at the end so that's why it's called a reverse sear. So I'll see you shortly. So it's been on now for five minutes. I'm just gonna carefully open it and we're gonna turn it over. You see already it's looking nice. Just gonna untangle that wire. It is hot though. Don't do what I do. 
and burn yourself all the time. Close that back down. And we're just going to adjust the vents a little bit more just to bring the temperature up a little bit. I'm going to give that a couple more minutes on that side. Slowly open it up. It's had about a minute and a half on that side. Okay, I'm just going to take it off onto the plate. Cover it up, and I'm just going to pull the probe out the middle again. Make sure you use a cloth, okay, and that's just going to sit on the plate wrapped up. And the reason for that is it's a two stage method for the reverse sear. So let me show you inside. So you see the lump wood is glowing nicely. So we need to get that really hot now and get that temperature up inside the dome. That's what we'll do. Just close this down. Open the vent right up at the bottom and open it right up on the top as well. We can now see the temperature on the Komodo is almost at the 400 degrees Celsius mark. So that is around twice as hot as your standard home oven would get. So when we open this, we need to be really careful. We need to burp the grill first to let a bit of oxygen in so it doesn't flare up. It should be glowing. Yeah, so you see how those coals are nice and glowing hot. Then we're going to get our steak that's been sat resting. It's taken about seven or eight minutes for this to come up to temperature with all the vents open. You'll see the steak's nice some nice juices coming Lovely. so we're going to put this on anyway, straight away how hot it is and then we're going to close the lid for 45 seconds roughly to a minute so it's now been about a minute so we're going to come in give it a quick turn it's looking good I'm going to give this another 45 seconds on this side. So let's look again. So I'll just burp the grill. Okay. And that looks, looks really good. Still nice and tender. So we'll just close this up. Then what we're going to do, so the, close the top vent, close the bottom vent, that will then slowly bring the temperature down and it will save any of the lump wood that we've got left inside, we'll be able to use that for another cook off. What we're now going to do is we're just going to hit it with a little sprinkle of salt and a little bit of pepper. trusty big knife. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm just going to cut right through, bring it round, let's open that up. And look at that, look how juicy that is. Really good. So this has been sat here for about five minutes and it's perfectly cooked. This looks immense. Let's have a little, let's have a little taste.
the heat of the Cajun spice is fantastic and the meat is really soft, tender, juicy, it's really really good. I really think everyone should have one of these in the back garden to cook up something like this in the time it's taken realistically, probably 15-20 minutes with all the stop starting that we've been doing. So I think it's great. This Cajun spice has got a real kick to it, which is good because some, sometimes it doesn't. So let me know in the comments below if you're ever trying to reverse sear on a stay like this. What have you coated it in? Do you coat it in anything, your own rub? And what would you have sitting here as the side dish to this steak? Would it be chips? What would it be? Let me know. And let me know what you think of the little mini Kamado. I think it's done a pretty good job. It's hardly used any fuel at all, especially compared to using my big one. Uh, I think it's really, really good. As always, make sure you head over to our Facebook page at One Pizza Too Many for all the in-between action and pictures. And also make sure you do hit the bell to subscribe to our channel and keep the videos coming to you so you'll get a notification when I release a new video and you'll be the first to know about it, which is always good. So thanks again for watching everyone and I will see you very soon. One piece are too many.